Hey, Chief. How you doing? Hey, Cyrus. Good. How are you? Excellent. Excellent. So, today I just wanted to talk a little bit about Captain China. Okay. Um, just get a little bit of background about what inspired you to put it together mm -hmm. and some of the process that you went through while making this excellent comic book. Sure. All right. So, let's begin here. Um, when did you start Captain China? Captain China, if you really want to say when it started, it was probably around 2008. Okay. Yeah. Um, and, a, and it was when I f took my first trip to China. Okay. Um, I've never been to China before that. You know, I was born in Taiwan, you know, so I was not, not even part of the mainland China where I come from. Um, and, of course, I grew, you know, came to America age of nine, so I grew up here. So there was never any real connection to China. <clears throat> but around 2008, you know, when the Olympic was, was out, you know, I, you watch it on TV, it was kind of exciting. They show you all these new construction, these, you know, stuff they're building out there. So I, I you know, I told my mom, I said, hey, why, why didn't go take a look and you see see what, what, what it's like out there? And my mom's been there several times before because we got some really distant relatives. But for me, it was kind of like the first time out there. And, and you go there for the first time, it, it really was very different. The impression you get is very different, you know. Um, China was kind of opening its door at that time period. Before that, it was very closed off, and we just kind of see it as a, a sort of a, a, a strange communist country. That, that when you say communist, it's really kind of what we generally know from like James Bond movies and stuff like that, from the way Hollywood portrays it. But being out there for the first time, it, it was it was really kind of an eye opener. And you and you're there, you you meet some of your relatives that you've never met before, sure. and you listen to them talk and everything. And go, wow, it's it's very. You know, they're, they're, uh, the people there are kind of just like us. You know, um, they're not all like buy into the the, pump, the communist mentality. Um, so, so I go, okay, this is interesting. You know, I thought this is kind of a fascinating encounter uh, with a totally different culture, totally different societal structure, political structure. Sure. And I came back originally saying, hmm, you know. Oh, It'd be interesting to do a, a superhero character called Captain China. But it's, it would be like a parody that flips the concept of what we traditionally know as superhero on its head. Sure. Almost doing something like truth, justice, you know, the communist way rather than the, the American way. Right. I figured that would be a fun parody comic book to do. Because I used to do some of the high and, and doing sort of satire and parody was really kind of what, you know, what I'm interested in doing. Absolutely. So I had some talk with, with some friends, close friends at the time, saying I got this idea of Captain China, and, and, and they threw some stuff back to me back and forth, and we all kind of, everyone kind of laughed when we talked about it. <clears throat> it was, everyone kind of laughed when we talked about it. It was kind of real funny. Um, but the, 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 the thing is, then I went back again, I think, uh, about a year later, you know, and, and that was when, after Olympic, more, you know, more and more Western investment and, and 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 culture started to filter in, and I started walking around, um, you know, Shanghai uh, at that time, and it was interesting because you see like they're building huge, tall skyscrapers, absolutely, yeah, you know, being constructed everywhere, but then they had little alleys that still like you know, like very traditional, you know. Chinese buildings that dates back probably about a hundred years ago. All right. So it's kind of like this weird clash of of brand new, you know, modern and then very very old, you know, traditional stuff. But then in these low alleys, I would see people buy, you know, pirated DVDs of American movies, and a lot of them were superhero stuff. So it's kind of interesting. I go, okay, um, you know, they want this stuff. You know, a lot of it was not allowed to come in, you know, openly at the time, but people want American superheroes. So after that trip, I came back to America. And I thought, hmm, maybe you know I should retool the Captain China idea, not make it a parody, but reflect what I saw. You right. know, saw this contradiction of old and new, a uh, contradiction of communist ideal and capitalism, because that's that's what we, that's what you see out there. And I go, that's very interesting because there's never been. Um, uh, a superhero comic book that really kind of play with these parameters. Sure, absolutely. And that definitely reflects the current state of China. Even mm -hmm. if you look at it from a much higher perspective, yes. you can see that the way in which they've structured their government and the way in which they've structured their economy mm -hmm. sort of conflict with each other naturally. And so that's an interesting you know, yes. topic to be able to yes. play around with. Yeah, so, I, you know, so I, I came back and I started really putting effort and thoughts into it. Um, and he, the funny thing is before that, I always think I was never going to work on a superhero comic book. 
Yeah, because even when we were in Marvel and DC, we used to kind of jokingly say in the editorial department, everything that's been done has been done with superhero. That is true. Everything's kind of running on formula. Um, you know, how how a superhero is kind of introduced, how a villain is introduced, what are some of the conflicts, how you can kind of make it interesting and not interesting for the readers, what the formula that's always there. All right. If you if you're in the industry, you know all the tricks. Right. So you kind of go, there's nothing really exciting anymore. You know, we've, we've explored almost every idea. But because of my trip to China, I kind of go, hmm, I don't think there's ever been anything that, that kind of does this contradiction, you know, society where really do exist. It's not a not a fantasy dystopian. Right. And what happened if you put a, um, the, the, a concept of, you know, American superhero into that kind of social structure? All right, that's an exciting, you know, mm -hmm. idea in general. Yeah. Um, I understand that it took a long time from beginning to end to be able to roll out all 12 issues, right? Yes. Um, what were some of the thought process that you were going through when you were initially starting it compared to the end when you were rolling out your last issue? Well, the funny thing is when we started Captain China, um, the ideas was already fully formulated. Sure. It, took about, it took about a year to kind of sit down and plan out everything. There was, you know, detailed... Um, you know, project proposal written now for all planned about about like 12 13 issues we planned like a one year arc with that so it, it was kind of like okay once we start we have to do the entire story run because it was planned to be that way it wasn't like planned out to be a single episodic story all right um and originally you figure you know as a marvel at dc you figure okay you know you do a 12 issue arc you know they, they roll out an issue a month so and you can finish it within a year. But even if we delay it to do it every other month, we can still finish it two years. So that's not too bad. But the, the the big surprise that that I ran into was, you know, you're not Marvel in DC. You know, you're not you're not you don't have an army of artists and, and writers and editors that can back you up on this stuff. Right. We'll get there, but not not right now. Yeah, right. yeah, we're right. not right now. But but that's what it was. So you go, okay. Um and and the project always starts out exciting. Yeah. No. And then, to be honest, even in the process of working on it, it's still exciting. But it becomes very labor-intensive when it starts to get stressed out in time. There were periods of time where, where the book just stalled for two, three years. Right. You know, we either didn't have the money at the time period, or there were artists that, that we were trying to work with, but there were personal issues at the time. Right. That, that you know, the, the, the guy were, that was helping me out doing the coloring... Um, his father passed away around that time period. Right. You know, so so, he, so the project was started, had nobody to that, that I knew personally that can go to it and hand the project off. Um, so that occurred uh, until, you know, um, uh, a friend of mine, Tawan, decides to say, okay, I really like what you're doing. I'm going to put some money into it. And then the project kept going again. And now, of course, because somebody else was putting their, their, the money into the, the project, you felt responsible for, for you know, for their investment. So then it became a, a mentality that says, I have to finish this because it's not just me now. Sure. There's somebody else attached to the project. And at the same time, it was getting some traction. So you have people who, who were buying it on a monthly basis. Not a lot, but the, I had this one guy that was in Hong Kong. Okay. That every time I put out an issue on, on, the, on, the, you know, on the, the OXL comics site, he would buy it immediately when it's out. Like, basically, I think the guy has just been checking on that, checking on, on, on the site every week or so just to see when a new issue, issue would come out. And sometimes it takes like five, six months for me to upload an issue. So you felt like there's also a responsibility that even just that one reader that Absolutely. was constantly coming by. And he bought all the way till the at the end when we're finished. All right. So stuff like that kind of kept you going. Right then, first, you'll have an idea, it's exciting, it's fun, let's try it out, this is great, I can be like Marwick and roll 12 issues to a point and go, we need to finish this because now I'm not just for myself, it's for other people. Right. There's there's a certain responsibility to, to completing the project. And it, when it was finished, there was kind of that moment where you go, ooh, okay, I've been working on it for so long, but it's done, there's nothing there now. Yeah. What's next? You even kind of go, oh. It's finished. It wasn't like a jump of joy, but there was kind of almost like a, a, a surreal moment when you, you just kind of go, wow, I can't believe it. Absolutely. Yeah. And so at this point, you know, we're able to take everything that you did there and mm -hmm. let that be the backbone of the company that we're working on right now. Yes. That's an exciting idea. Mm -hmm. Well, part of it is because the experience is there to do a, a long-term serial book. You know, you know what the problems, you know where the pitfalls are. Yes, uh, you can try to maneuver around it a little bit and then avoid that. A lot of the projects I plan now tend not to be that long. Yes, 
um, much quicker one shot or three issues and all this stuff like that so you can finish projects faster you can rotate things in and out absolutely so there's a lot of opportunity there mm -hmm. that came from that just general experience yes most people if they're working independently I don't think they roll out 12 issues at a time uh, if you look at smaller companies the unfortunate part is they, they kind of probably start with the same excitement right and they always think once I put this out this is it you know it's it, I'm, you know it, you know, it hit the jackpot of some sort. Everyone's going to buy my book, which they probably do. But comic book is a uh, is a medium that it needs the continuation of material to support it. You know, meaning you do issue one, you got to do second issue, third issue, and keep keep going until you build up a big body of work. All right. You know, and then you, then there's um, I think a real story content there. There's character development and everything. Um, so. Uh, you know, compared to a lot of small companies, I don't think they're able to to go through that. You know, to just to kind of stick out with a project. He says, "Well, I've started it." You know, so at some point, if I didn't want to finish, I didn't have to. Right. But uh, like I said, because other people, we felt like you're responsible for other people. It was kind of finished at the end. Sure, that's absolutely true. Mm -hmm. 